There's one question I want to ask you guys. Is Halo Infinite too easy? Because the Fracture Firewall is back this week and I'm left with just one thing to do and that is to get this chest plate that's completing one challenge and I'll be done. And the one challenge you need to complete, I don't know. This might be a little tough guys, but what I have to do is complete a match in PvP. <laughs> I don't know, that's a that's a tall ask right there. That's a that's a tough one. All kidding aside though, what I actually want to talk about in this video, like is it actually too easy to level up in Halo Infinite? Also, since I'm legally obligated to say this, you have to make sure you tap like and subscribe to the channel, guys, if you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo. So let's get right into it. Because I completed my battle pass a long time ago, and I'm one step away from completing the fracture firewall. And I see you guys in the comments all the time saying, oh, I already completed it. It was super easy, which I can kind of see why. I mean, we have a regular length season, right? And for this season right here, I didn't use a single double XP token the entire time. Obviously, my main game is Halo. I play in a bunch, so it makes sense that I would put enough time into play. But there's another game I like to play that I put plenty of time in and I still struggle to finish off the battle pass. And that's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I've actually played this game a bunch and you can just see with my battle pass that I'm still having a good amount of progression I still need to make. And we only have 21 days left for me to finish this all out. And I've been playing consistently since the release of season three and i've probably played season three of one for two a lot more than i have of halo infinite and the idea of progression right is to kind of keep people playing the game give them a carry at the end of the stick to keep grinding towards now if your battle pass is too easy to get through within the allotted amount of time would people just kind of hop off and play something else? Because think of it like this. We look at the Steam charts here for Halo Infinite, the infamous Steam charts we see right here with the release of Season 3, a large boost in the player count right here, going from around 5,000 to 6,000 concurrent player peak to up to almost 13,000 players. That's a good jump right there, but then you can also see as we dive a little bit more into the weeks and months after the release of Season 2, that there is that slow decline of the player base which is going to be expected but you can see that the drop off still happens with modern for two right because season three launched right around here around august april 14th april 12th somewhere around that time frame so you can see there's a big jump in players right there and another big spike of players that came in later on and then there was like a mid-season update right around may 10th which kind of like didn't really do a whole lot extra probably some extra players right around here but nothing too crazy so is it the battle pass and progression that really holds on to players? I'm not quite sure. Or is it the content that's within the game that keeps people playing? And the content to play for Halo Infinite during the Fracture event week is Team Snipers. But is Team Snipers really a mode to bring people back to play? Well, I'm sure some dedicated Halo fans would say yes, but for the general gaming public, I don't really think it really matters, honestly. Because I think right now with Halo Infinite, the big thing is just like, it's all just kind of the same stuff that we've been playing for years and years. I guess I kind of round it back to the beginning of this conversation with the, is Halo Infinite too easy in a way? Well, um, with the currently with my sniper shots, it, it's too difficult because I can't hit shots apparently. We see a lot of pro players complaining that Halo Infinite is too easy. Oh my God, my face! Saying that they actually want like the b bandit rifle to be the starting weapon, not the battle rifle because the battle rifle just makes it a little too easy to get the kills. And I don't know, man, because I really like how the battle rifle feels in Halo Infinite. Might be actually my favorite gun to play around with in this game. I just, the battle rifle is just one so iconic to the Halo franchise franchise and just it just looks and feels right man and i the one thing i can't stand about snipers in this in this game guys is the zoom mechanics i really hope they fix that up with season four. Oh my god my face because the way that zoom works in halo infinite for the sniping where if you can zoom in once and then you zoom in again but say you get de-scoped in this situation and then you zoom back in again you'll be put back into 10 times zoom compared to classic halo where you just be put into oh uh, and put it into five times zoom and again to kind of reset your aim, which makes more sense and be something that I think a lot of people would rather play. Oh my god, we're now we're beaming all of a sudden. Maybe Halo Infinite is too easy. It's easier to get a kill with the fusion coil. Almost, but I mean, I've played around with the bandit rifle enough, especially when it comes to BTP, and I will say it is not an easy weapon to use. It's just like, it seems like it just like the hit detection on it just isn't quite what it needs to be. It's like with the banner rifle, I aim, I shoot, the bullets go where I'm aiming, which is fantastic. And you know, the banner rifle does the same thing as well, but it feels like the, uh, it's less forgiving with the banner, which might sound like, oh, but then that requires skill. But yeah, but then there's also that certain level of like, 
general ease of use and i think the banner rifle might need some help on that one honestly i'd buff the banner rifle the one have less recoil yes you do want skill to be a uh, relevant part of the game but i do feel that it might be a little too skillful but to the point where it's like almost not really even useful which i kind of think feel like where the banner rifle sits at the moment like a no bloom dmr in reach felt great the dmr in halo 4 felt great the dmr in halo 5 also felt great but the bandit in halo infinite Questionable. Oh my god, can I the shot? No. Of course not. I'm getting an assist. There you go. Get him out of here. Oh, there's another one though. It's not right on the corner here. You think you're being sneaky, but really. Uh actually you might just be because I completely lost you. Oh my god, it was a blank melee, but I still got the headshot, baby! And ever since that May update, guys, I've been getting way more blank melees in this game. Some funky stuff is happening to the coding. I don't know what's going on, but it's something weird. Now, like right there, you see, it put me in the 10 times zoom and it just threw me off completely. Oh, but all you gotta do is spawn. And you get the easy flank. As a long time Halo fan, I think the sandbox in Halo fan is in a decent stop spot right now. Like, yeah, some weapons are better than others, but I think they focus a lot more on utility rather than lethality. And I think a lot of people are now complaining that a lot of stuff in the sandbox isn't lethal enough. I mean, look at the pulse carbine. Get him out of there. Uh, put me in the 10 times zoom again. I don't want that. There we go. See, look at that right there. Put me right in the 10 times zoom. Why? Because I got de-scoped in that last gunfight. So if I try to aim somebody again without realizing I got de-scoped, put me back to 10 times and completely throw up my state of like my awareness of where my aim state is. It's just, I hate it in this game. Oh my God, we did it. We completed the game. You know what that means? Oh my gosh. We completed the event pass for the savior protocol on the chess piece. Some said, it couldn't be done. Though we do have an interesting wrench coming into the progression system of Halo Infinite within season four. And that wrench we're talking about here is career progression. Give me back the Warhog, jerks. Career progression can completely change the gameplay experience of Halo Infinite. And the reason why I'm saying that is because they could maybe go off of the model that say it's similar to say Modern Warfare 2. Oh, oh, it's not the tank gun, but it's a scrap cannon. Oh, but he has rockets. That is one sad looking mongoose. <laughs> He's trying his best to keep it going. How you, how you doing, man? You doing all right? Hi, yes, crouch, victory crouches. You want me to jump in that? Like this? There we go. Look, like a little party dance for me jumping in there. Okay. Oh God, no! Back on track though, what I was talking about was career progression could actually throw a complete wrench in the progression system of Halo Infinite. Because right now, it's all about the challenge system. Like even though we've slowly moved away from it a little bit with the match XP and stuff like that, it's still like, it's about the, per the challenges, man. And the challenges, like I said earlier, were kind of mundane and boring and not really that really rewarding to play through. But we have career progression coming in with the launch of season four that was recently confirmed by 343. And I'm curious if what they'll do is have career progression be like your actual progression through the game from progress through the battle pass and things like that. You actually just play the game, get XP points, and then you'll just progress that way. Kind of like how it is with Modern Warfare 2. And if you want to earn like the capstone and stuff like that, you just need to just jump in and play the challenges. That would give a dual purpose to one progress through the game, which will equal to, to the battle pass, which I think they did actually say that they do plan on making the match XP the main source of progression within Halo Infinite. Well, also keeping the chance system and it being more of an additional thing if you want to do like the weekly capstones, which is kind of what I think is the true middle ground, the true usage of challenges, I feel like shouldn't be like the main source of progression. They should be an additional bit of like if you care that much. Oh, we can get this tank. I can get this tank. I can get this tank. I can get the tank. No! Because right now, if they just added in the pro career progression system, it would just be almost kind of redundant to where they're doing the progression system right now. Oh, let's plant that grenade on this wraith, though. It didn't work on the tank, but we got it on the wraith. Let's go. So I'd like to see if 3 4 can make some gameplay progression differences between like career progression and also challenge progression. And honestly, if they just focus on people just playing the game and have that be your source of progression, 
I think we'd be in a pretty good spot when it comes to that feature of Halo. Like coming out. Oh my! I was about to talk some mad trash. I thought I had a guaranteed kill, but that guy <laughs> said no. I want it back. It was mine. I earned it. And I want to play with it. And I think it's been an issue that 343 has been struggling with with Halo Infinite. It's just trying to find a way to reward people for just playing the dang game. Oh no, we almost finished them up. We got the kill. Oh no! You gotta face this tank head on. I'm a man, I don't care. I should have cared. Well, I kind of want to ask you guys a question is, do you think that career progression will keep you playing Halo Infinite? I mean, it kind of did for me when it came into MCC when I saw like certain badges you can get for your rank and stuff like that, which is really cool that they're doing with the Halo Infinite progression system when it comes to career progression that you'll actually have like military ranks, not just like a number next to your name, right? Dude, this guy is ready. Whoever touches this flag, he is not going to let that happen. <laughs> this is a... Uh, that's a strategy, dude. This is my rocket launcher, sir. I will keep this for myself. Denied. Got him. Now, will the progression system change my experience when it comes to playing Halo Infinite? I mean, I don't really think so, unless it actually will like provide you some kind of benefits right so some kind of unlocks you can get like you get or gain to a certain level for just playing the game enough or maybe you tie in like i said earlier the match xp progression kind of stuff with the career progression and leave it the challenges up to just challenges you want to complete just because you want to get like the weekly capstone or something <gasps> no no you're not happening no! Oh, they captured the flag. Oh, I had to stop right there. This is the campaign skewer. I'm not really quite sure what it does, but it's white, so it's upgraded, right? There we go. Well, upgrade enough. Back in progression, I'm not like the craziest fan when it comes to like getting a like, cool badge with a number next to my name. I just kind of care more about playing the game with. Because what's the cool new stuff to do in the game? Is there a cool new mode? Is there a new experience I had that I haven't had before in a game previously? And that's something I think Halo Infinite's really struggling with the most. I mean, we need like some cool new mode to really get people excited about playing Halo again. I mean, we've been playing like Team Slayer and Big Team Battle for how many decades now? And I feel like Halo Infinite's been so focused on just like trying to get up to the part of what we've had previously with Halo games and also focus way too much on just like nostalgia feelings of wanting to bring back the old feelings you had when playing Halo back when you are in high school. Oh my god, I am am the vehicle destroyer this round right now. And the player sniper as well. Oh my goodness, we're on fire. So it will be interesting to see those infamous steam charts and what happens when it comes to the player drop off when season four comes around, because it's going to happen. The new thing comes in, everyone plays it, they get their fill and they move on to something else or just don't play any living as much. It's totally understandable. Natural has happened with every single game ever created of all time. I will not let you keep this wasp. No, hurt my flag friend. You stay away from my flag friend. Stay away from my flag! Oh no! I will help you carry this flag, boy. It's sudden death. My flag friends are getting killed! Believe! We just tied that up. Oh my god, that was crazy epic. Scored on us, brothers. Right when I thought we hit the glory. So is Halo Infinite too easy? Uh, when it comes to progression and ranking up, yeah. Honestly, I would say it's a little too easy. When it comes to the gameplay of it, I think it's actually in a good spot right now. If you want to know more about the cross core customization coming in within season four, they even talk about playable elites, assassinations, and the bonus XP weekend coming in within Halo Infinite. Well, check out this video right here. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.